What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. Uh, we're going to be jumping into Kanehurst, but I, I I just could not walk away. We need to finish this now, so minor changes here. Uh, we have put on the Choir Garb set that has a ton of Arcane Resist, since the only thing that is killing me here is uh, the, the Arcane spell at the end there, the uh, Call from Beyond. So we're going to be putting that on to remove the damage, and we're also going to Beast Blood. We're going extra hard here. We're going to pop Beast Blood and Bolt Paper, uh, which will turn me into a glass cannon of death, but also probably murder her in the first minute of the fight. Assuming I don't die picking up my echoes. No, 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 no. Oh my god, we survived it. Jesus. Die. Yeah, so the, uh, should have put that in my notes. The choir set really helped out there. Just mitigated out all the damage from her. Uh, so last episode, as I mentioned, with the Queen of Canehurst, we can bring her over here to this thing. And we can basically leave her fleshy pulp and it'll resurrect her. The value of that is strictly in online play. The idea is you can um, you can finish doing her quest line. And then after finishing, or excuse me, you can finish up Alfred's quest. And then on top of finishing his quest, you can still bring the queen back in case you want to be in the Vilebloods Covenant. Uh, but on that note, we actually gain access to two additional covenants with what we're about to do. We're going to have the Vilebloods Covenant and the... Um, the Church Covenant, unlocking both of those in this episode. Welcome home, good hunter. God, the emotes are such up? awkward times. Very well. All right, so that is good. Um, now beyond here, we could. This is where the the split kind of goes. You know, like we're going 451, 451. Uh, so since I'm going to be getting identical gains for both, it's better to level skill here since skill is going to give me uh, more visceral damage. And what I mean is if I went 35 or if I went 40, 40, or I went 30, 50, I'd be getting the same results. Um, but we're actually going to, now that we're at 25, 25, I'm probably going to, no, you know what? Vitality is good. Let's just keep pumping skill. Let's just keep getting damage. Uh, before we go into this next area, we are going to change up our runes a little bit. The boss fight for this area is, uh, basically parry test so you want your max stamina on um and then instead of the moon we are looking for our claw marks there we go we got two claw marks putting on this claw mark is good and then instead of the max health i'm also going to put on visceral's heal so 20 percent visceral visceral seal and then stamina by 15 percent. this is just going to help a lot uh, with this boss and where we're going. So go to the second one, warp to Witch's Abode. We're going to be running straight backwards here. Uh, the summons to go to Kanehurst, you should have picked this up if you've been following the guide. We got this in uh, Yosofka's clinic when we approached it from behind. So uh, if you go to episode one, it's the, it's the way out. Yeah, you want to go to part one of the Forbidden Woods. I believe that's episode number nine. And that'll show you where to find this summons. Excuse me, ladies. I'm also going to change up my armor in just a moment here. Not a big fan of how this looks. Just not really uh, my cup of tea aesthetic-wise. So just run on down to that pillar over there. And that's basically the carriage stop. Once you approach it. We get a cutscene. 
Ding ding, and this carriage shows up, and then you jump on the carriage and you go to prom. So this carriage will bring us over to Kanehurst Castle. This is where uh, the basically the they're basically the vampires of Bloodborne. Blood. Let's be honest. We're gonna call them what they are. They are the vampires of Bloodborne. Um, as for what to wear here, you can really go with whatever. I'm gonna swap up to the Iron Helm. Eh, there we go. I'm gonna make a beast. Which is the set I want we actually get in this place. It's a really badass set. And I'm low on blood vials. Welcome to Kane Hust Castle. So first thing we're doing is going over to the right. There is an elevator here. This is the only real shortcut in this place. It'll be quite a while until we unlock it. Instead, swing behind it and grab the Frenzy Cold Blood. Uh, after doing that, we're going to drop down and you can see some worms. Ignore the worms. The worms suck. Grab that tempering blood gemstone and then get out of the way as fast as you can. Ugh. God, I hate the worms so much. The worms really do suck. There's no reason to fight the worms. They are a pain. They give you nothing good. Just ignore them. Next then we are going to grab this numbing mist and then start killing the bloodsuckers. Now what's great about our weapon is how I, I mentioned uh, quite a few episodes ago that our weapon is considered radiant. Uh, and both, both two-handed and one-handed, our weapon is considered a holy weapon of the church. And this area is filled with, oh my god, with enemies that are enemies of the church. Get the, I hate, I hate these fucking things so much. Anyway, point is, our weapon is going to do bonus damage against these stupid, jumpy mosquito things. Whew, pain in my ass. Anyway, um, we're going to kill the Skeeters. There's some loot off to the left, guarded by more of these disgusting beasts. Goodies. Now, if you want, um, there's. Uh, let me just kill this one since we're right here. There's another one down there. There's another one over there. There's no loot, but they're down there. If you want to fight them. Same with this one. Honestly, once the the doors open. I wouldn't bother. They're kind of just uh, rather annoying, you know? So head on into the castle here. And the castle is a, a little bit weird. There are ghosts all over the place. So you can see these ladies scrubbing floors. And as we kill them... I'm not seeing them yet. We're surrounded by ghosts right now. There we go. There's one of the ghosts. There's one of the ghosts. I'm not sure if these ladies are tied to them, but I feel like the more you kill the ladies scrubbing the floors, the more the ghosts become visible. Um, they are very slow. Our weapon will just tear right through them, being that it's a holy weapon, so, you know, no worries there. Even in one-handed, as you can see, we're shredding. No real point in killing them, though. So, anyway, uh, once inside, we got the loot on the left and the right. Upstairs is going to be a chest on the right-hand side. No, the chest was downstairs. Never mind. We want the chunk upstairs go right first, then left. Alright, there's a chest I overlooked. Let's see a chest. In my notes, I wrote... Once inside, loot on the left and right. 
The chest on the right. There's the chest. This is what I get for trying to look at notes and the game at the same time. Ah, yes, the writer polish. It's like a uh, gun blade. Gun blade rapier. Okay, head up this way. Uh, this is going to be an ambush, so instead we're going to work our way our way around here. And while these ones aren't too bad, there are ladies that will yell. The yelling ones will stun you in place, and then they will have a big murder party on top of you. Those ones you gotta look out for. Grab the bullets. I'm gonna grab this. This is some clothing. A noble dress, so I can look all pretty. Coincidentally, it's the same dress that the prostitute has on. Um, up the stairs, and then there's gonna be an ambush by the statues. So there's a bunch of gargoyle ambushes. You can see them right there. They very, very much blend in. Um, either... Pop, I don't have my gun on. Hang on. They're pop them to, like, wake them up. You don't want to just approach them. Because if you just approach them, they're gonna ambush you and gobble you up. So, get that one. Uh, this just allows you to, like, kind of go around and look at that. But there's more. So, here's another one. Our sword being a holy weapon works quite well against them. There's another one up there. This one shouldn't, uh, shouldn't bother us, though, until we decide we're gonna boop it. Chunk. Alright, by the statues, knock up the gargoyle, third arc gargoyle, and a fourth ambush by the door. If they grab you there, they like, um... I don't know if they're supposed to be... They're like vampire gargoyles, because when they grab you, they actually try to, like, chew your blood. Uh, continue ahead for some dude. We just gotta fight some guy. Um, murder him. And then we have two gargoyles that will be guarding the executioner outfit. Which is my personal favorite. So a good way to... There's none in these statues right here. But um, one good way to check is just as you're running, just hit your lock on. And even if they're hidden, you'll lock onto them. Yes. Yes. This is my favorite. Everyone's like, what's your favorite armor in Bloodborne? It's this. The Executioner's Garb looks slick. Um, I guess we could go Blindfold Cat for now. I'm trying to think what I have that really fashions well with it. The gray wolf cap doesn't look too bad with it, so we might do that. Let me see, what are my choices here? You have better arcane and bolt. Um, hmm, or I could go for the iron helm. No, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep this on. Anyway, inside this way we go. Um, check my notes here. Once inside the library, get the registrar and the elevator. Okay. I'm gonna get this. I'm actually making really good progress through this place. And then we can... Nope. Oh, it's gonna run out. Well, anyway, this is the elevator shortcut. There you go. You know how to leave now if you want. Uh, but we want to go to the right to get the Evelyn, which many consider to be the best gun in the game. Um, cross this way, up that, and then drop. I'll show it to you all in a second. There's a couple, couple of new variations. We have these ladies now who are like uh, shooting blow darts at us, and then. Uh, there should be some of the, the Screaming Maidens. We should be seeing them in just a moment here. Um, run over here for another one of those blow dart bitches.
There's not much up here, but there is a chunk buried in the far back corner. These are what's hitting us, these assholes over here. God, I was, you know, I was going to leave you alone, but you just couldn't help blowing, could you? All right, all the way back. Oh, no, no, this isn't it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There's our chunk. this window and we're gonna drop and we're gonna drop bullets and we're gonna drop some more lots of ambushy uh, kind of hidden places here right Inside, there's the Executioner's Gauntlet, which is a, uh, it's an arcane spell. It's not related to the set that we picked up. And some other goodies, so we're gonna actually... Yeah, these are the ones you gotta be careful for, because that scream can lock you in place. Executioner's gloves. And the set is over here. It's the student set. Or excuse me, knight set. Knight scarf. Student set was Bergenworth. Oh, come on. See, so I guess this is good to show you what happens if you get caught. Alright, now briefly over to here. Uh, the Evelyn. As you can see, you need 18 and Blood Tinge, but it has a B scaling there. Uh, this thing does some disgusting damage. If you have the 18 and Blood Tinge, it will, like, you can actually hurt people with this pistol, like, spamming shots at them. So, really strong, but requires you to kind of do a spec towards it, because 18 and Blood Tinge for only really getting the Evelyn out of it is kind of like a weird trade-off, you know? Uh, but anyway, so we've gotten all the stuff inside. Um, let's real fast just talk about Executioner's Gloves. This is a, another arcane thing. Uh, we don't have enough to use it on this build. It needs 20. To be honest, you, you're going to want like 30 to 40 to really see the value of this, but it shoots out three spirits for three bullet uses. Um, enemies that are weak to arcane, it's actually pretty good at. Otherwise, it's kind of useless um, against your average enemy. You know, like you're going to see damage like you just shot out three bullets, which isn't a lot. So anyway, uh, back out of the scaffolding here. Let's cross this. I like to just run diagonal to keep things nice and simple. Um, we need to go that way, but before that, we're going to cross over here. You can see our friend up top. That King Cold Blood, and then head on inside. The baby cries are because I have enough insight. Go on and open this up. This gives us a shortcut. That's where we came in. This is where we first started going up. So, in the event that you die. Uh, this is where we, we want to go to, but we want to take this ladder up. And we're almost at the boss, almost at the end of the zone. Which worked out perfect. I was able to fit Abby into the start, dunk on her, and now we have another boss. 
Okay, so we got the warm blood jed stone, um, and then run around to the left, and there should be a skitters this way. There she is. Alright, chunks. And we can just follow this around. And this will take us uh, back over to there, which is where we want to go. I think I have enough uh, blood vials, but we'll see. Right, so over this way, um, kill this gargoyle, and then this is basically an ambush. More gargoyles are going to show up when we go to take this loot, so just be ready. I think that's actually what you're supposed to match with this. Let me see how it looks. Now it matches the knight set. Would make more sense. I don't think there's actually a helm. I wonder what the because Alfred doesn't have a helm. Uh, but anyway, after killing them, just drop onto this roof. And this is kind of the run you got to make to the boss every time. So go over to this thing, drop down, run this way, drop down, and then go around this thing, and drop down. Yeah, pretty well hidden, right? In cold blood, uh, up the stairs. We got brave marks in the corner, and then on to the boss. Uh, so the next boss is Martyr Logarius. He is, for lack of a better term, parry bait. Um, there's two, actually two phases here, to be fair. Uh, the first phase is he's going to be just doing a bunch of bullshit. Just try and hit him. You know, it's not any worse than fighting a typical hunter. Uh, the second phase, he's going to try attacking you a lot more. And you really need to parry him. You need to parry and get visceral attacks. If you cannot parry, you're going to have a very bad time against this boss. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, he is resistant across the board. Well, not resistant. He's not weak to any element. But having on some paper won't necessarily hurt. Uh, just, you know, putting it out there. As you all know, we like to use the auger of Ebriitis to get parries. It will spread his butt cheeks. The auger will get parries left and right against this guy. Cannot stress that enough. It works amazingly. Um, so we're going to Phantasm Shell and then just auger him every chance we get. But anyway, let's go in. Let's go show him, show him what we're good for. So right at the start here, we just want to zerg him and get in as much damage as we can. It's good to fight near one of these pillars so you can avoid all of his spell bullshit that he keeps doing. He's doing a lot of spell bullshit, as you can see. But we need him to decide he's going to properly fight with a ranged weapon. Or fight with his uh, melee weapon before we're going to... Oh, God damn it. But we're really going to be able to get in some damage here. This is the hardest part of the fight, to be honest. There we go. Now he's pulling out his sword. Fucking took him long enough. This is what we wanted now. Miss that. Heal up. Away from that. We can just uh, use these things to avoid the swords. We'll just keep dodging. Oh my god. This fight is not going how I would have hoped. Shit, I turned off my... Really, I mean, honestly, now that he has the little sword thing up, I should probably just reset the whole fight. 
Or at least, I'll, let me try pulling them all the way over here. So the swords aren't really a concern. Yeah, that was a piss poor performance there. I just, I missed it. So the, I mean, getting, getting viscerals with the auger, it's, it is, I'll say a little bit trickier, um, than it is with the gun. Because with the gun, you're a lot faster. The, the the auger has a slight bit of recovery. So if you're off a little bit, you have to have like frame perfect timing to hit it. Um, I'm going to try and use the auger again. And if things don't go as I would expect, I'll just, you know, swap and use the gun. And actually, I have no vials. I have no vials at all. So we're going to go pick up some vials real fast and then we'll come take down Lagarius. So even after picking up vials, things still didn't go as planned. Um... Basically, I decided to take a break, get lunch, and come back and tackle this fight after I'd had a chance to eat. I find that, uh... Basically, when I start recording around lunchtime, I, I tend to get hangry and then perform worse in fights. Like, died to Ebriitis, died to Ligarius. These are both fights that I would not typically be dying in, so... Anyway, we're just gonna fight it with our sword and our pistol. Um, we, we used the auger in the walkthrough prep, and it worked absolutely splendidly then but uh using it with our current sword doesn't it just doesn't seem to be working very well for us so instead we are going to just use the pistol get parries the old-fashioned way the pistol works great here i'll start the fight and oh come on ladies not right now we're not we're not doing this right now Man. You're just thirsty for my hunter. Kane Hurst Simps. I think part of it is with the uh, with the walkthrough prep. The weapon we were using, um, the Amidala arm, it has pretty long range to it. So that range gave me a little bit extra spacing to get an auger out. Whereas even in two-handed, while this sword does have some range to it, the Amidala arm is almost like a whip. So it's much, much longer compared to this. But anyway. We're just gonna get him down into his form, and then we'll go one-handed, and we'll win the fight with Viscerals. Because honestly, especially once you get into the... Oh my god, not off to a good start here, are we? Uh, once you get him into where he pulls out a sword anyway, you're not... Like, the damage you're getting isn't damage from your, your sword. It's damage from your Viscerals. Which is why we put on that Visceral rune to begin with. Actually, I'm just gonna switch it now, because I'm not keeping up with him. This is why we had the heal on Visceral. Oh wow, I thought I was dead. Ha! There we go. Ugh. 
definitely one of the sloppier attempts at uh, Ligarius that I've done, but... Sword definitely worked easier than getting the auger off. So anyway, pick up the crown. Light this. And then put on that crown. And approaching this with the crown on opens it up. And then we're gonna head on up here. I claim no subjects, but here lieth me in the forest. Or get thee gone. So hit this. Over here for the unopened summons. And then approach the queen and kneel. Visitor. So just burn through her dialogue. You want to swear oath to the vile bloods, swear the oath. This will give us access to another one of the covenants. This was like the, um, the vile bloods was kind of like the equivalent of the, um, the like red phantoms or black phantoms. You know, it was like the invasion covenant. Anyway, return to the hunter's dream. Go to Cathedral Ward. And I'm gonna go this way. And this way. And up here. We're gonna go talk to Alfred and give him the summons that we just picked up. Hunter badge and a bow. After that, go ahead and reawaken. Go to the Vile Blood Queen's chamber from here. Master, look, I've done it. I've done it. He has beat her to death. The queenly flesh. Go on and talk to him. He's gonna say, "I did it. You know, I did it for my master." Blah blah blah. Basically, he's gone crazy. And now we're gonna warp away again. And we're gonna go back to where we very, the very first place that we met him to get access to his covenant. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the queen is the vile bloods. If you are trying to level the covenant, I mean, given it does like online PVP and whatnot, so it'll be kind of hard to do that with the game not being as populated as it used to be. Uh, but if so, take the queenly flesh down to that altar where uh, Ebriitis was. Offer the flesh; it'll resurrect the queen, and then you can still hand in blood dregs. Go this way. And we're going left, up, and then down to where we first found him. Goodness. Be gone, peasants. I'm the king. Here you will find him dead and the radiance rune waiting on the ground. Go ahead and warp on back. So, with that, I believe we are done. Yes. Also, just to show these real fast. Going over here, we now have the four main oath memories. Uh, continual here on your death plus one, and then vile HP recovery up. Uh, it's really like worthless, it's like 2%. This one, some people like. 
Uh, but the, the main reason to wear one of these was for being in that covenant for PvP. If you're just looking at single player stuff, hands down the Hunter Rune for the 10% stamina recovery speed up. Uh, but otherwise, that wraps things up. So uh, from here, we are ready to go to the Nightmare of Mensis. We can also pick up uh, the helmet. I forgot about the helmet and then I remembered it. There it is, 60,000, but the gold Ardeo thing looks ridiculous. It's actually pretty badass. Um, do I want to spend 60,000 Echoes on it? Why not? Just to look like this. This is the look of a man who's going to murder you. Anyway, closing out here. In the next episode, though, we're going to be making our way into the Nightmare of Mensis and pushing towards the end of the game. So stay tuned, and I will catch you all then.